Hello, welcome back to another episode of the Kumbaya podcast. I am so happy to have you with me. Today, I'd like to talk about intuition and following your intuition when it comes to your health. Practicing listening to your intuition is important for you, your children, and even for any elderly family members that you may take care of. Really, I'm not advising you to follow Dr. Google, right? But healthcare, I believe, should be a collaborative effort between provider and patient. And currently in America, in the United States, I, I think that we have a little ways to go to get to this point, right? So I just want to start by saying that your body and your needs are unique. And we can get the benefit of going to see our providers from their years of experience, from all their training, all the knowledge that they have amassed and that they bring to the table, but you are the expert in your body. And we really, you benefit when you collaborate with your providers and give them that information that only you know. And part of that is your intuition about how you feel in your body. So in this episode, I just want to talk about three ways that you can practice listening to your intuition and bring that to the table when it comes to your healthcare decisions, when it comes to your healthcare meetings with your providers. So number one, ask questions. And really, I advise my patients to prepare them ahead of time if possible. And that does two things. One, it helps you not forget them. And number two, it really allows you time to process beforehand. So not forgetting them is important because even if you have all the best intentions and you're excited and you know what you wanna ask, but then you hit traffic the entire way to your appointment and you show up and they're humans too, they're having a crap morning and you know the kids were screaming and crying, I didn't want mommy to leave and, and your provider is just not on top of their game for whatever reason, or they're just not feeling well, who knows? But you know all these things can kind of happen and then you show up and all of a sudden you're flustered, they're running late or their time is cut short and you don't, you don't get to ask what you need to ask. So that's one reason. But then the other reason is when you sit down and you really allow yourself the time and space to process, that is really powerful. That will allow questions to come up for you and you have a better chance of getting them answered if you even give yourself the space to allow those questions to come up. So I say, <clears throat> you know, if you meditate, meditate or pray, just kind of find a quiet space and start asking questions. Like, what do I need to know to make the next, to take the next step? What do I need to know to feel more comfortable with this course of action that's being presented to me? Whether it's, it's surgery or <clears throat> some therapy or something, you know, just kind of start asking, what do I need to know? What do I, what, what else do I need to find out? What do I want to ask tomorrow or then whenever your appointment is? And then in the appointment, I, you know, really pay attention to how the provider replies to you. And that can tell you a couple of things. It could mean they're just having a bad day. If you're like, whoa, this guy's off. Um, but it really could show you if they're aligned with you, right? And if you feel that your questions or your concerns are being dismissed, or they're just not on the same page, then you can absolutely get a second opinion. You can absolutely find another provider and, and you have that option, right? Number two, check in at every stage with your body, right? So we're asking the questions, we're preparing them ahead of time, but now as the provider's answering them, you're kind of checking in with your body. Do I like what they're saying? Do I like the energy that they're giving off? Or am I feeling really hot right now? Or do I have this nervous feeling, butterflies in my stomach? Um, you know, am I just feeling pain or tightness anywhere? So these are all signals to you that you should check in with. And it doesn't mean that something isn't right for you. It just may not be right now, or that provider may not be the right provider or whatever. You know, the more that you can cue into what your body is telling you, then you can say, 
okay, I need to pause on this or wait, or let me think this over and, um, and listen to what your body is saying for sure. And then the final point is that you can say no. So consent is vital with everything, right? But I think, especially in this patient provider relationship, we kind of forget that we have a say and that we can say, great, I know you want to put me on that medicine. Let me see if I have some other options I can exhaust first. Let me see if I can try changing my diet and nutrition. Um, so examples, when I was preparing for this episode that come to mind, there were kind of ahas for me were um, <clears throat> like going to the dentist. When you go to the dentist, typically there is a a routine, you know, you meet with the hygienist and they do the cleaning and there's so many steps in the process. And then the dentist comes in and says, Hey, and pokes around and says, bye. And you may get an x-ray or not. Well, when you're pregnant, you don't get the x-rays. So why can't you say no, if you're not comfortable getting the x-rays at other times, you can. Um, a lot of people are thinking twice about fluoride treatments. You can absolutely say, I'll take everything else, but I don't want the fluoride wash today. Thank you. Or my child, I don't want the fluoride wash for my child. You can request that. You can say that. Uh, another example is with the chiropractor. So I just have had in the past limited experience with chiropractors. So when I finally became open to seeing one, I had no idea what the treatments were that they did. I didn't know it was standard. And um, she did this like upper cervical rotation, mobilization. It's a, it's very fast. It's a high velocity and I am just not comfortable with it. So I gave it two times and I saw, okay, she's going to do this every time. I'm not cool with this. So I stopped going. And then I met a chiropractor that does a gentle technique and just used activators. And so then I was like, oh my gosh, I could have requested that all, all along that there are other options for having these to really still help the upper cervical spine in this example. And I didn't even know that I could say, I don't want that treatment or to ask, is there another option for this, you know, this technique? So, um, so you could obviously ask for that too. If you're a little hesitant on going to a chiropractor, I, I really believe they're beneficial side note, but anyway, just know that you can opt in or opt out and say, Hey, I'm really sensitive to people touching my mid back. Please talk to me. Please tell me what you're going to do. I need to know every step of the way. It's just a sensitive area for me. So, and if, again, if someone isn't going to um, respect those wishes, then absolutely find another provider, right? And you can look for providers that have no, more natural tendencies that are just aligned with you. And you should always have the option to say no. So I'm curious if any of you have had that experience, um, that would make me feel better knowing that I'm not alone, but have you ever had that experience where you're in a provider's office and you didn't even know that you could ask for what other options were available or to say, hmm, I choose this, 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 but I decline this treatment that you're proposing for me. Um, I'd love for you to respond, you know, hello at kumbayallpodcast.com. Let me know if you've, if you've experienced that too. I think, it, I think it's very common. So just to recap the three points, it's very important to listen to your intuition and to practice cultivating that skill. It is a skill because it entails that you're listening to your body. And a lot of us are staying in our heads and focusing outside on everyone else and not really focusing on ourselves as much. So number one, ask questions. Number two, check in with your body. And number three, exercise your right to say no and to give consent all along the way for what you choose and what works for you. I hope this was helpful. Have a wonderful day. And until next time, take care. Do you ever wish that you could learn the essentials of pelvic health from an experienced pelvic floor physical therapist at a fraction of the cost and from the comfort of your own home? This episode is sponsored by Progressive Pelvic Education, your source for online courses to expand your pelvic health knowledge and promote optimal wellness. Pelvic health is wealth, and there is a lot of essential information about our pelvic floor that isn't taught in school. Learn what to do and not to do to avoid the inconvenience and pain of pelvic floor issues in a self-paced course you can take anywhere. Visit progressivepelviceducation.com to get access today.